This is the exam two debrief for the fall 2019 organic chemistry one course. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with problem one, which is asking about the functional groups present in this molecule that treats prostate cancer. So you can go about this a couple ways. One way you could do is just look at the molecule and, and name these things. That's a chloride. You have an SP hybridized carbon with a nitrogen. That's a nitrile. You have a carbonyl with a nitrogen. This is an amide. And you have an alcohol. You can then look at your choices and eliminate the distractor answers from functional groups that are not present. So there's no ether. There's no ester. There's no azide. So the correct answer here is D. Question two, how many of each hybridization type of carbon are present in darolidamide? SP, there's one, that's in the nitrile, so I'll, I'll circle that in here. So we can eliminate A and C. If you look in the third column, which is SP3 hybridized, there's all five, so you can't do any eliminations there. So let's just go ahead and count the SP2 hybridized carbons. The benzene ring, we have six. We come over to this ring, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the correct answer here is going to be B. Moving on to question three, what IR stretches in wave numbers or reciprocal centimeters would you expect darolutamide to exhibit based on the functional groups present. The correct answer for this one is going to be A. We have an alcohol, 2300, that's the nitrile stretch, 1685, that's the amide stretch. So represented there are regions 1, 2, and 3. Basically, the, the point of this is when you're looking at these molecules, identifying functional groups, you need to have an association of, of what stretches they're going to see or you're going to see in the IR as well. Question four, in consideration of hydrogens bonded to only sp3 hybridized carbon and ignoring any coupling from heteroatoms, what peak multiplicities would you expect in the IR spectrum? So I'm going to go here and change the color to blue and identify the sp3 hybridized carbons. We have one here that has one neighbor, so that's going to be a doublet. You have one here that has five neighbors, so that's going to be a sextet. You have one here with one neighbor, that's going to be a doublet. You have one here with four neighbors excuse me, three neighbors, so that's going to be a quartet, and this one has one neighbor, so that's going to be a doublet. So the correct answer for number four is going to be C, doublet, sextet, doublet, quartet, doublet. Number five, how many unique carbon signals would you expect to see in the 120 to 140 region of the C13 spectrum? This region is C sp2 hybridization. From example or question two, we said the correct answer was B, which had 13. However, of those 13, twelve of them are going to occur in that region, and the one of them which belongs to the carbonyl occurs away from the 120 to 140 region. So the correct answer is going to be 12, which is A. Number six, we're looking at um, what is the, the depth spectrum going to look like? So how many peaks will be up? And we're given this information here. The CH, CH3s are up. the CH2s are down. So the molecule only has one CH2 group, so we can eliminate 
B and C. So we're left with choices A and D. The correct answer is going to be D because if you count, go ahead and draw them in here in blue, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have ten peaks that are up. And again, those either belong to CH or CH3. Seven is asking you why the amid carbonyl stretch is lower than 1700 and the reason why. And the correct answer for this is B. The amid functional group, which I'll draw a general one here, that sort of mimics what we see in the compound. It has a resonance form in which the lone pair on nitrogen is delocalized up onto the oxygen. So here's our resonance arrow. And so what is that doing? It's making that carbonyl stretch less of a double bond character and more of a single bond character, hence the reason why it occurs less than 1700. Moving on to questions 8 through 13 regarding uh, the following spectral data. You're given high resolution mass spec data, IR data, proton NMR data, and carbon-13 NMR data. Question 8. Using the HRMS data, which of the following is true? So the highest mass here is the parent, and we see that there's two peaks, and the ratio of them is one to three, and that's gonna tell us that there is a chlorine atom present. So the molecule has chlorine. The correct answer for eight is going to be D. Question nine, which of the following is evident from the IR data? If we look uh, in these different regions, so we said region one, region two, region three, The unknown substance has a carbonyl group that could be part of an aldehyde, ester, or ketone. That is the true statement. Region one has CH stretching as all organic molecules do. However, in this area here, we do not observe any OH or NH. So that's going to uh, eliminate B Region three has this carbonyl, which we're observing as a strong stretch. We know that the unknown substance does, does not have a, a primary or secondary amide, again, because those would have an NH stretch. And we know it doesn't have an alcohol or amine, again, because those would have an NH stretch in region one. Number 10. Using the proton NMR data, what is the total hydrogen count? So here we're going to use the integral height. We divide each by 10. That gets us 1.4 and 1 for the rest of them. So we have to multiply that by 2. That gets 3, 2, 2, and 2. So our total here is... 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 2 is 9, so that answer is A. At this point, let's just go ahead and, and, and recount some things. We have a carbonyl present. We know we have a total of 9 hydrogens and a chlorine in the molecule. Question 11, using the C13 NMR data, which of the following statements can be regarded as true? So if we count 
the unique number of carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. And here is a delineation of those carbon atoms. The 170 and above region, that is going to be sp2 hybridized. We know that because there is a carbonyl. The remaining carbon atoms are all sp3 hybridized. So when we're looking at these statements, we can eliminate ones that have four unique carbons. So that's B. The rest have five. Now the subsequent part of that statement has to be true. A is not true. We know that there is an sp2 hybridized carbon in the carbonyl group. The unknown substance has five unique carbons, four of which are sp3 hybridized and one is sp2 hybridized, so that's the true statement. The unknown substance has five unique carbons, three of which are sp3 hybridized, so that right there is false. One is sp hybridized, that's false because based on the chemical shifts in the carbon, an sp hybridized carbon occurs in a different region, so that is that's eliminated. 12, based on the available information, which of the following is the correct molecular formula of the unknown substance? And again, we know there's five unique carbons. We determined from the integrations there were nine hydrogens. We know from the mass spec there's a chlorine, and we know from the IR there's an oxygen. So at this point, based on what you know, you have to determine what the mass is of that molecular formula. So 5 times 12 is equal to 60. 9 times 1 is equal to 9. 1 times 35 is equal to 35. 1 times 16 is equal to 16. When you add all that up, that gets you to 120. Now this is where you need to do some calculations because the parent has a mass at 136. So if you take 136 minus 120, you get 16. And what that is telling you is that there is a second oxygen atom present. So the final molecular formula is C5H9ClO2, and the correct answer, therefore, is D. In consideration of all the structural data, which of the following structures is the best claim for the unknown substance? The correct answer here is B. So again, for that, you're going to use the multiplicities. You if you need to account for three triplets and one quartet at the appropriate chemical shifts and so B is the, the best answer for that. You can eliminate D based on this being a singlet that integrates to two. You can eliminate C because the chemical shifts will not match what the proton NMR data is. And you can eliminate A based on the multiplicity of these triplets will, will not be in the um, chemical shifts that the proton data is, is saying over here. Moving on to the next set of questions, and this one is regards to the spectral problem 21. Based on the infrared spectrum, what is the major functional group present in the unknown structure? The correct answer for this is C. There is a strong peak at 2249. That is region 2. That corresponds to CSP, hybridized carbon functional groups. So within those choices, you have nitriles or alkynes. The multiple choice, you only have um, nitrile as the choice. 
We know that it's not uh, an amide because there's no carbonyl, and we know that it's not an amine because there's no NH stretching in region 1. Which of the following is true regarding the mass spectrum? So upon examination of the mass spectrum in that problem, you have twinning peaks that are of equal intensity in the parent region, 147 to 149. So the correct answer for this one is going to be D. Question 16, ignoring the solvent peaks at 77. In the carbon NMR, which of the following is true? So if you do a count, you can see that there's four unique carbons. So right away you can eliminate A as a distractor. So three of them are sp3 hybridized. And you can see that from the depth spectrum above it. Those are CH2 groups. One of them is sp hybridized and has no hydrogens. And you know that because of problem 14, which is telling you that there is a nitrile present. And so that is an sp hybridized carbon. So the correct answer for 16 is B. Question 17, ignoring the TMS tetramethylsilane calibration standard at 0 ppm in the proton NMR, which of the following best describes the proton NMR? So if you look at um, the unique number of sets, there are three. So each of these has three. So you can't eliminate a choice based on that. Um, what you're really eliminating it is on the ratio of those sets. And this may seem tricky, but if you're paying attention to the depth NMR, the phasing of those three sp3 hybridized carbons are negative, telling you that they're CH2 groups. So even though you determine a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio through the integral lines in the proton, the carbon is telling you that those groups are 2 to 2 to 2, so the correct answer is B. So based on all the available information, which of the following is the appropriate molecular formula? So we know that there's four unique carbons, so C4. We know from the proton integration that it's H6. We know from the mass spec there's a bromine. And we know from the IR there's a nitrogen from the nitrile, so we get C. 4H6BRN, and the correct answer for 18 is therefore C. Question 19 is asking you which of the following is the correct structure. So if you do a simple carbon count of A, so 1, 2, 3, you can eliminate that as a distractor. You can eliminate B based on going uh, from the answer from 14. You need a nitrile present, not an amide. C is eliminated because of the chlorine, so the correct answer is D. Matches all of the uh, available data. Questions 20 to 25 were relying on problem 71 from the spectral data. Without doubt, what functional group is necessarily present in the unknown substance? So this one, the correct answer is aldehyde or ketone, which is C. How did we arrive at that? Region 1 does not have OH or NH stretching, so we can eliminate it. We can eliminate B for the same reason. You don't see any broad stretching in region 1. D, alkyne or nitrile is eliminated because you see no peak in region 2. Question 21, upon examination of the IR and mass spec data, what is the maximum number of carbons this unknown substance contains? So if you count the unique carbons in the, in the carbon NMR, you see that there's four unique carbons ignoring the solvent peak, so the correct answer is B. Twenty-two, 
Which of the following best describes the functional group present based on your thorough examination of the carbon and proton NMR data? We already said the IR does not contain a region 2 peak, so the alkyne is out. There's no region 1OH stretching, so the alcohol is out. And D also has alkyne, so the correct answer for 22 is C. Twenty-three, using the technique of proportional heights, which of the following is true regarding the proton NMR analysis? So if you look at the numbers, you're given 9, 19, and 28. That basically gives you a 1 to 2 to 3 ratio. The, so the correct answer for this one is A. The three unique sets, you're basically counting... Um, counting the, the unique um, sets that you see there. So the best structure for this one and the way you're going to arrive at this is where the peaks are located in the proton NMR as well uh, is going to be B. We said there were three unique sets. So this A has one, two, three, four. C has one, two, three, four. D has one, two, three. So we can eliminate all of those. The correct answer is B. That's how we get our one to two to three ratio. So question 25, upon further examination of the actual structure shown in 24, there are not three unique sets, but four. Which of the following is true? And the correct answer is A. And so the reason for that, if we consider this structure and we draw these hydrogens in, so this relationship from that relationship, so that makes instead of three, we have four. So this has been a, a review of exam two for the fall 2019 Organic Chemistry 1 course using IR, NMR, and mass spec to elucidate structure.